Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast and a big thank you to Nagesh Kumar for emailing me because Nagesh works for an IT services company and is based in Paris and recently sent me an email saying, Hi Neil, I'm a great fan of your podcast on Tech Talks Daily and I really appreciate the platform and all your efforts and that's one of the reasons that I tune in every day. But... I am keen to get an audio version of your recent book, Great TED Talks Innovations. Any suggestions on how to get it? Now, first of all, a huge thank you, Nagesh, for taking the time to tune into this podcast every day. And then not only that, sit down and send me a message. I appreciate how valuable your time is. So that means the world to me on its own. Now, as for the audio book... I'm a huge fan of audiobooks too because they help me learn when I'm going for a walk or a run or just make the most of any downtime that I might have or dead time as they call it. And this is a question I've been asked several times over the last few weeks. And the answer is I was commissioned to write the book by a publisher, which is great because I didn't have to worry about it putting any money down or cover art design or any artwork inside the pub. In fact, I had nothing to worry about other than writing down the words. So the publisher took care of absolutely everything. And that's the good side of having a publisher to do everything for you. But, and there's always a but, isn't there? You do miss out on the control, speed and agility that you can have if you self-publish a book, which means... Ultimately, yes, I would love to do an audio version, but unless the publisher comes and asks me to do it, it's probably not going to happen. And I will send you a few screenshots of the book, Nagesh, just because I want you to see that it is much more of a visual book because the artists from the publisher's creative team really have done an amazing job in bringing the words that I wrote down to life. Uh, It really is a almost like a coffee table book, almost a little bit artistic. (laughs) It's something that I couldn't have done, I must be honest. And for those reasons, you probably get a better enjoyment out of the book. You probably get a better enjoyment from the physical book than you would the audio book. So thank you so much, Nagesh, for emailing in. And I hope that answers your question. But on today's podcast, I want to head to Berlin in Germany to learn more about mod devices, MOD devices. And MOD Devices essentially provides an open platform where creative coders can provide audio software that musicians use in a live environment. And today's guest is the founder and CEO of MOD. His name is Gianfranco. And he recently said, in this world of total creativity, their platform catalyzes the interaction between artists and musicians with a unique community-driven approach. And that direct contract provided by the, the whole group fosters the collective. And that conversation drives not only the development of audio plugins, but also the devices themselves. And I love what they're doing here. It seems like they're connecting the minds behind the tools with this creative community and using them as this almost stepping stone with a new model of digital collaboration and directness. So we're going to talk about the creative economy and the open source software and community based software development. So buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to Berlin, where the CEO and founder of MOD, Jan Franco, is waiting to speak with us right now. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me here. So uh, I'm Gianfranco Ciccolini. I'm, uh, I'm an engineer and also I'm a guitar player from Brazil. I've been playing the guitar and also fiddling with computers for almost 30 years now. And uh, I am the founder of Mod Devices. So we do uh, a platform for audio musicians. We have this solution for audio musicians to use their software on stage. And uh, we have been doing this for almost 10 years now. We had lots of pivots in the way. And uh, the latest pivot was in 2014 
when we decided to do our first mass-produced product, and I moved to Berlin after that. So although I'm Brazilian, I'm now sitting in Berlin, and Mod Devices is a Berlin established company. Fantastic. And there's so many aspects to your story that I absolutely love. But for people that are just tuning in and hearing about you guys for the first time, can you tell me a little bit more about how you're pairing software developers with consumers who offer critique, but in real time? And in doing so, you're helping to, you're, or you're aiming to develop products that actually create a community. Because I love what you're doing here, especially the role of technology and building a community. But can you tell me a little bit more about that? Of course. So um, we, as I said, I'm a guitar player and I've been using uh, this guitar related equipment, mostly pedals, let's say, and, uh, and multi effects. I've been using them for decades already. And uh, I've always been very dissatisfied with uh, what I was using, especially with the digital ones, because uh, I was able to program computers and etc., but I could never touch that part of my digital devices. And being a uh, free software enthusiast, I've always been into Linux since the very early uh, versions of Linux. And in Linux, there is this thing that they call the Linux audio community. It's uh, the community of developers around Linux that, that around Linux that do audio software. And I've always been hooked to uh, hooked up to that. And at one point, uh, when I was thinking about this programmable pedal. My idea was not actually to do a pedal that I could program, but to get all of this uh, code base that uh, an existing community was already actively developing. So they were already exchanging information. And what I, we did was actually to design a computer that has a form factor of a pedal. So you use it as a normal musician. It looks like a multi effect, let's say. But the guts of it, it's still the same as a desktop computer. On the same on how you program it, so actually what I what I did was to get an existing um, community with an existing dynamic and just try to stretch that community into a form factor. We didn't create the community; the community already existed. We just shifted where it uh, started being active, and so this uh, this interaction between the developers and the users was something that already happened, and we just. Uh, optimized it for actual musical use. The computer itself is a horrible device for musicians. It's not, uh, it's not designed for musical use. It's designed for the desktop use. And uh, the, the devices that we do, they don't resemble a computer at all. They resemble a, a stage equipment. And uh, so that's, uh, I say that our biggest accomplishment is between many is this one in which we ported this existing platform, the platform from the desktop to the feet of the musicians. All the rest happened all, almost as an automatic thing. So we have this open platform where creative coders can provide audio software that mus musicians can actually use in a live environment. But how does it work? And Do you have any use cases that you could possibly share that will just help everyone listening understand how it all fits together? There is a... Um, if you are using your computer today... Uh, you, you can install loads of different software that you can use to process your audio. There are many big ones like uh, Amplitube, Tarrig, the GarageBand from, uh, from the Mac OS system. These are all softwares that are aimed to musicians. But in order to use this software, you need to get an audio interface, a MIDI controller. It becomes this Frankenstein solution. It's very cumbersome. And it's something that you cannot actually take to a stage. You don't want to play your guitar on a stage with a, with a laptop on your side. Our device, it looks like a multi-effect. So it has the displays, the buttons, the foot switches, just like a multi-effect. But inside it, we have uh, an actual computer. So it's, there's an OS inside and it's loading software. And we develop it, these, um, a sort of a remote interface in which you, how you configure what's happening inside your device. And we have these uh, audio, uh, like these virtual pedals. And we have a canvas in which you drag the, the pedals in a, in a screen and you drag all of them to assemble a pedal board, to assemble a combination of effects, just like the guitar players would do with their actual pedals. We do it virtually in the platform. And all of this is running inside a single device. 
pinboard, which is the computer itself. And the, this device is meant to be used on stage. So you take, it, you take your guitar, you take your mod device, plug the guitar, plug it in, in an amplifier, and it processes the audio. And when you are at home uh, preparing these virtual pedal boards, you can uh, download new plugins from the platform. You can exchange with other musicians your combinations of plugins, your virtual pedal boards. And you can even connect with the developers. We have a very active forum in which you can make requests for the developers about some particular plugin or some new plugin that is not uh, existing. And uh, developers will actively engage with the, with the users trying to come up with new plugins that are more usable on a, on a live environment or that has some particular requirement that the users want. But it's this very organic, um, this organic uh, relationship. And the relationship is bridged by our devices. So from the developer's point of view, we provide a device in which they, they, they can deploy software. So they can code, compile, and deploy. This is all via, done via an app store. And uh, so they publish and the users, the musicians download it. On the other hand, from the musician's perspective, you have a, a small box, looks like a pedal, but normally pedals, they have only one or a collection of sounds. And in our pedal, you can download all this software that the developers are publishing on the platform. You can download all this software, combine it, come up with your own custom solutions. What I love about it, though, it does seem to be quite far-reaching. So I've got to ask, I mean, who are your target market here? Is it beginners, expert musicians, or is it indeed both? It's both. When you, um, when you do this kind of products, uh, you, originally when we were thinking, we were thinking about, uh, I had in my mind, only two populations. So I had the musicians and I had the, 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 the developers. Very well-defined populations. Nowadays, after we developed the platform, we realized that there are uh, at least four different, um, four different uh, uh, populations inside the platform. So on one very uh, technical end are the developers that actually code plugins. Then you have a second layer of uh, developers that are... Um, they use like Max MSP, Pure Data. They are um, they are not actually coding with the C, C++. They are doing graphical uh, coding, let's say. Then you have a third uh, population, which we call the sound designers. These are people that are the pedal board makers. These are people that actually like combining the different effects of the, the pedals to get one particular sound on one particular texture. And then you have on the very end of the musician's part, you have the guitar player, you know, the, the, the straightforward guitar player, which is the person that wants to get a box, plug the guitar, and have ready-made sounds out of it. Uh, inside each of these populations, you have many musicians. And uh, having a musician that uh, it's a sound designer, has this profile of being a sound designer, does not mean that he's necessarily a professional or an amateur musician. So we have already uh, engaged with musicians that are, um, they are professional on a musical sense, but from a sound design point of view, he just wants to get ready-made sounds. And uh, so this is one, one of our target groups. It doesn't matter, uh, it's the person that only wants these ready-made sounds and we preset the, our products for these people. This can be either professional musicians or uh, amateur musicians. On the other hand, you have people who are really searching for their own tone, for their own texture. And uh, this is where a part in which we really excel on this sound designing part. And again, on this part, you, can, you have musicians which are amateurs, but uh, musically speaking, but they are really into finding uh, new sounds but it also happens with professional musicians who uh, have a professional career in music and they are really into getting new sounds, new textures. That all being said, I think that the, our platform is very wide in terms of different populations that it uh, can accommodate. And in each of these populations, we have both the amateur musician as the professional musician, experienced or, uh, or novice. But I think it's the same for as the platform can embrace all of them. 
And on top of that, I also believe you have a device on Indiegogo at the moment. So can you tell everyone listening a little bit more about that? Because you guys have had some fantastic success on there, haven't you? That's right. Uh, so uh, the device that is on Indiegogo now, it's called the Mod Dwarf. It's our newest, newest uh, device. will be released uh, to the market until December. And this is our third uh, processor. Our first processor was called the Mod Duo. And uh, it was the, f- the result of our first Kickstarter campaign that we did in 2014. And it was still a very conceptual product, uh, kind of trying to, to make the most of what the platform could offer on a single device. Very conceptual. And once we did the Duo, we have uh, prototyped an entire ecosystem. So the plugin store, the feed of pedal boards for the musicians to exchange pedal boards, the forum, all of this was prototyped around the concept of the Duo. This happened in 2014 and was started shipping in 2016. Since then, we have been evolving a lot. And uh, we are now on our second uh, round generation, let's say, of the platform in which in terms of devices, we have now broken down the device in two different usages. So we have a device that it's meant for only for the desktop. This is called the Duo X. And we have a device, which is the Mod Dwarf, which is uh, meant to be used on the floor. It's a floor unit. They are better targeted to their, to their users. And what we did, uh, especially with the Dwarf, is that uh, as the company grew, we, we managed it to make a cheaper device. The Duo had a ticket, average ticket of 500 euros. The Dwarf has a ticket of 300 euros, the manufacturer, uh, uh, manuf- the, the retail price. And this is a huge leap for us in which we are reaching a price point in uh, what we can offer with our devices. At that price point, it's a very good offer. It's a very good deal. And we launched it in February of this year, the Kickstarter campaign for the Dwarf. It was extremely well-funded. We got our minimum funding in less than 24 hours. And by the end of the campaign, we had pre-sold 800 units. And now we are doing a follow-up campaign. It's called it an in-demand campaign on Indiegogo, but it's a continuation of the Kickstarter campaign. And it's also going super good. We'll, we'll surely uh, exceed the 1,000 units when this is finished. And I think it's important to highlight that the project was actually funded within 24 hours. And this isn't your first rodeo. You've had experience there and Kickstarter, et cetera. So can you offer any tips for anyone listening to this conversation who want to start their uh, their own Indiegogo or Kickstarter campaign? Uh, are there any tips you can offer to help them achieve similar success? Because I think a lot of people might think that you just put a video up and a description and put your launch date. But of course, there's so much goes on behind the scenes before that program is even launched, isn't there? For sure. Um, I think that uh, all these crowd crowdfunding platforms, they are highly, as the name says, they are highly dependent on the actual crowd. So the community. So there is a work that needs to be done before you launch a campaign which is the actual community building. If you don't build a community before you launch a campaign, it's very unlikely that you're going to be successful. Uh, Both our first product in 2014 as the the Dwarf now, we did a fantastic job of building a, a community around that campaign before the campaign was launched. So you, you manage to aggregate all, the, all this interest between, inside a population, all this interest for your proposal, for your product that you're proposing, so that when you actually launch the campaign, there is a lot of expectation around what you're doing. So the, 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 the launch of the campaign is already um, a result of an existing inertia. You're not uh, creating momentum once you launch the campaign. When you launch the campaign, the momentum was already created. And now when you launch it, it's the time to collect the results of all that momentum that you have built. Fantastic advice. And looking towards the future for you guys, I mean, what is your grand vision for the future of mod devices? I think that uh, we, our solution, what we propose, it's something that it cannot be categorized on on the two main sectors of our industry today. 
So there is a sector of uh, the, let's call the stage ready devices, the pedals, multi effects, sequencers, these machines that are self contained. And you have on the other side of the spectrum, you have the computer itself with all the software and all the accessories that you can plug to it to, to, to come up with an audio processing solution. We are, we kind of inaugurate a new sector, a new market, market segment that it's neither the computer and neither the stage ready device. We, we try to get the best of both worlds. And um, what we're doing, I think, in terms of a trend or in terms of a, of a natural evolution of a technology, it's, an, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's kind of a natural thing. And uh, I, saw, I see ourselves sort of creating or conceptualizing a new market segment in which we want to be leaders of this market segment in the future. We, we want to be a reference in terms of uh, audio processing on digital audio processing that musicians will see mod devices as a established solution for your audio processing needs be it with the device itself, be it because of the database and the huge collection of plugins, be it because of the integrations of what it can provide uh, between equipments. You have many reasons to look at it, but in the end, is it, it's a platform that sits neither on the computer world or in the stage-ready world. It's, it's a sector, uh, it's a segment on its own. And what we see as a vision is that we are the leaders of this market. And you, you have enjoyed a lot of success, but of course, none of this has happened overnight. So for those startup founders listening to this podcast, what would you say your biggest challenges have been on your journey and how did you end up overcoming them? I think that for, like for any other company, I think that the biggest challenge is team building. Yeah. Uh, assembling a, a good team, it's uh, the single biggest challenge, I think, of every company for a startup. This is even a bigger challenge because startups, startups are, are a harsher environment, working environments in many ways uh, because of routines, because of salaries, because of risks. So that said, I think that uh, the crea- uh, assembling a team has always been our biggest difficulty. I have a tremendously good team today and was not easy assembling it and we still need to grow. So we're, it's still a, ch- a challenge nowadays. But uh, yes, I think that team building is by far. We, we don't do anything that it's rocket science on the sense that we didn't create any new technology or patent or algorithm. No, what we do is to integrate lots of existing things into a usable format. And for that, you need a proper team to put the things in place and something that's, that's working and is deliverable and it's trustable. So again, team building. And as someone that's working in the tech industry, um, what are you curious about right now? And what excites you about the future? Because yes, we are in a period of uncertainty, but I think it is important to share those things that we are hopeful and excited about in the future. So what is there that's dominating your mind at the moment? Um, One of the things that get me, that is always on my mind is the, the music market not the one that I'm act- active in, so not the musical instruments market, but the actual musical market. The, the market of musicians playing music and people listening and paying for, to listen to that music. And I think it's a market that it's in, a, let's say, a constant crisis for many years already, since the, especially since the advent of the MP3. Now with the corona crisis, I think that uh, this market suffered a huge impact. Uh, The live concert uh, market went almost dead on the last two months. And what gets me curious is to see how this is transforming this market and how are people paying uh, and um, actually supporting financially the artists that they enjoy and then whom they want to keep making music. I'm personally very interested in that. I have some, um, I've been seeing quite some interesting uh, examples of uh, this live streaming movement that it has grew a lot the last two months and how this has been uh, cashed in and how people monetize on that. But how can the musician make a living playing music? This, I think, is one of the, the things that really crosses my mind, now, my mind nowadays. 
And uh, I am also kind of interested on how can we, as a software platform, as a processing platform for musicians, how can we have an active participation on this? I'm really always curious, uh, trying to find breaches. Like, how could we help in this or how can we be active in this? I think this is my, my most up-to-date, uh, exciting thing. Fantastic. And for anyone that would like to continue the conversation that we've started today and find out more information about the work that you're doing, can you just point them in the right direction of where they can find Mod Devices online, find your Indiegogo campaign, and uh, contact your team if they do have any questions? Yeah, for sure. So uh, our main site, uh, the main website is www.moddevices.com. For the coders, you can go to github.com slash moddevices, and all our software is there. For the makers, hackers, you can go to wiki.moddevices.com. And of course, we are in the social medias. So uh, facebook.com slash moddevices, instagram.com slash moddevices. We are all in these channels. Uh, last but uh, not least, the, the Indiegogo campaign. It's in uh, so indiegogo.com slash projects slash mod dash dwarf. Same thing for Kickstarter. So kickstarter.com slash projects slash mod dwarf. And uh, that's it. We are everywhere. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I'll add those links to the blog post that will accompany this episode. So much of what, so much I loved about today's conversation. But for anyone out there wanting to start their own Kickstarter or Indiegogo campaign, I love the fact that you highlighted that so many will rush in getting the technology right, getting the video right, and launching that campaign. But like you said, the most important thing is building a community first, building that expectation, building that excitement. So much uh, food for thought in that and great advice. But more than anything, just a big thank you for joining me on the podcast today. Okay, thank you so much for having me, Neil. By pairing software developers with consumers who will offer critique in real time, Mod Devices, this German-based effects processor developer, is aiming to develop products that create a community. And I love how this marketplace for unique ideas was just inspired by the urge to create a community that can easily be adapted by beginners. But while also simultaneously catering to expert musicians who just want to express themselves, and in doing so, MOD have created this simple step solution that's appealing to both parties. So a big thank you to Gianfranco to, for coming on here and discussing the creative economy idea in a lot more depth. But as always, let me know your thoughts about today's conversation. Keep your questions coming in. Let me know where you listen to this podcast by emailing me, techblogwriteroutlook.com, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, just look for Neil C. Hughes. And if you'd like to work with me, uh, whether that be business blogs or launching your own podcast, my website is techblogwriter.co.uk. But we're out of time once again. There goes the bell. So <laughs> I will meet you here, same time, same place, tomorrow morning, bright and early, and we'll do it all again. <laughs> so a big thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.